Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make trap or hip hop beats using just three elements. This video is specifically for those who are just starting out and don't worry, it's easier than you think. You also won't be needing any expensive gear or an education in music theory. All you need is the computer you're using right now. For this video, I'll be using Logic Pro X and its built-in sounds, but you can follow along in GarageBand for free or check out some other DAWs such as Ableton or FL Studio. If you wanna see specific videos for those programs, let me know in the comments below. Let's kick this off by breaking down the three elements we're going to be using, starting with the drums. The drums are the foundation. They set the groove and energy of the track. Next, we're going to be using a bass, more specifically an 808 style bass. And the drums and bass, they're best friends. I mean, they're like this. They play on similar beats and they work together to keep things moving along. The bass plays on the lower end of the keyboard and gives your beat that low end depth that makes your speakers go boom, boom, boom. The last element is going to be our melody and that could be a piano or a synth, really anything that plays on the higher end of the keyboard. Now, melodies are typically more complex and use more notes than a bass line, but it can vary per track. Songs can have multiple melodies or multiple layers of different sounds. For this video, we're gonna keep it super simple and just use one melody, but you can always experiment and add more sounds later on. Now I recommend following along with me in your DAW, also known as Digital Audio Workstation, so you can take the time to understand each step, each element, and its purpose. Let's jump over to Logic. Okay, here we are in Logic. Let's just go through some basic settings so you understand what is what and where things are. Again, in other DAWs, they're gonna have the same features. It's gonna be similar, but they might be in different locations. First up, this is our header, and this is where we're gonna set our project tempo or our BPM. And what that is, is that controls how fast or how slow your song is. So to give you an idea, we're at 120 BPM. Let's click this little button right here. It's a metronome and it counts on every measure. I'm gonna explain what measures are in just a moment. This is what that sounds like. So you can see that's how fast our beat would be. Let's slow this down to 87. So I'm just gonna double click and type it in, 87, listen to it now. And you'll notice is those clicks are happening on every one of these little lines right here. And this is again gonna be in every DAW, but from one to two, this is one measure, also known as one bar. And within these measures, there are different divisions. This is a quarter note division. So you can see one, two, three, four, and then it restarts. You can see how many measures we have. So right now this is a one bar measure. Also, if you're wondering what this is, this is a cycle or a loop. So it allows you to loop that one specific section. So if I hit play, you'll see it restarts. And if I have it off, it'll keep going. Now you can see we're on measure two, measure three, measure four, and now measure five. So these are your measures or bars. The name is interchangeable. And within those, again, you have different divisions. So let's go ahead and create a new track. I'm gonna hit the plus here. And we're gonna create a software instrument. And what that is, is that's any type of software that's inside the computer. It could be a drum kit, a synthesizer. It could be a piano. It's any type of instrument that is created by the software. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna create a software instrument. You can leave these on empty because we're gonna go through the library and pick a specific sound. So let's hit create. And now you can see we have our track here. This is where all your tracks are gonna be on this side. And the details of those tracks are over here on the left. So you can see instrument 26, instrument 26. We can retitle this drums and you'll see it changes here to drums. You have volume control. This is pan left and right. So that's whether it comes out of the left speaker or the right speaker. And then these are where all of your plugins or instruments or effects go. And we're gonna get into that a little bit, but again, for this video, we are keeping it simple and straightforward. In the arranger window, this is where you're going to arrange all of your patterns or your different melodies or grooves. All of that happens right here. And to do this, we're gonna right click and I'm gonna create a MIDI region. This little region allows me to have a pattern in it. So let's double click that and you'll see it's gonna open something that looks like a piano. And this is our piano roll is what it's called. Now, earlier, as I mentioned those four lines, let's zoom in. You can see this matches bar one, bar one, bar two, bar two, and so on. 
we zoom in, now we can see those lines in more detail here. And I can make smaller divisions. So right now we're on quarter notes. So you'll hear that metronome hit on every quarter count. Now, if we go to a smaller division, you'll see now there's eighth notes. You can see it cut them in half. So there's eight notes inside one bar. If we go back, now we can have four notes inside one bar. I'm gonna show you how that works with hi-hats in just a second here. But first, now that we understand what this is, let's go ahead and select a sound. And to do that, I'm gonna to go to my library up here. Let's go to electronic drums and let's select this 808 Flex. You can see it automatically loads in different plugins and effects that you can turn on. Let's hide this window now and open up our plugin. This contains all of our different sounds. Now these can be played from a piano or a MIDI controller like this. But if you don't have a piano or MIDI controller, no big deal. You can actually hit Command K and load up the musical typing keyboard. Now you can play all of this from your computer's keyboard like this. I'm doing that again right from my computer keyboard. You can also draw it in if you want. So if you don't even wanna play it, you can draw it in, which is what we're gonna do here. So let's hide this keyboard. Let's zoom into the piano roll here. And now you can see everything's labeled, kick, snare, and hi-hat. And those are the three different pieces of percussion we're gonna be using for this drum kit. Now, earlier I was talking about different notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and I'm gonna show you that now. So I'm gonna hold control and this brings up the pencil tool. Now I can draw things in. These are different notes. And the notes are contained within the MIDI region. The region, again, you can move around. Same with these notes, you can move them wherever you want. So let's go ahead and create quarter note hi-hats. And that's going to match the metronome because it plays on quarter notes. This is what it sounds like. If I change this to eighth notes, we're gonna draw in more notes here. We're gonna have double the amount of notes and the metronome's still gonna play those quarter notes, but you're gonna hear an additional hi-hat on every other one. So that's eighth notes. And you can get even smaller divisions. We can do 16th notes. So I'm gonna shorten all these and I'm gonna double them by holding option and dragging them. Now listen to all these notes still within one measure. So that's how divisions work within a bar or measure. Let's delete these. And now we're gonna start by adding a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. And again, to keep things simple, we are going to add a kick drum on the first count right here. And then we're also going to add it on the third count. You can see it's labeled count one, this is count two, here's count three and count four. And now we're gonna do the opposite with our snare. We're gonna add a snare on the two and on the four. This is what that sounds like. So that's the easiest way to draw in a very simple beat. And we can change it up. We can do different variations, move the notes over to different places. But again, for right now, let's keep it simple. Let's go ahead and add hi-hats on eighth notes. So I'll change the grid to eighth notes. And that's gonna be on every single one here. And if you're wondering how to change your grid, you can actually do that right here. See where it says eighth? There's all these different divisions. So if I change it to 16, to see they get smaller. If we go back to four, just like that. But I have uh, key commands, which you will get used to and learn along your journey. So now we have a simple beat. Now this is just one bar, you know, in time we're talking about two seconds. This isn't very long. So we're gonna wanna make this longer. So to do that, I'm gonna zoom out and by holding option, you can click this and drag it over and make a duplicate copy of it. You can also copy and paste. There's many ways to do that. Now, if we extend our cycle loop out, it'll now loop over two measures. Let's select both of these and zoom out so we can see them. Now what we can do is change up this second one to make it a little different. So maybe this kick drum, we actually move it over to this count here. Let's see what that sounds like. So 
So that's it, just a little variation. I encourage you to experiment with moving these different sounds on different counts within the measure so you can find out what sounds good to you. At this point, we have our drums in here. Let's duplicate them again, and I'm gonna extend this. Now we're gonna select all of them, and I might add one more additional kick drum down here at the end, just to give it, again, a little more variation and we'll do some other changes later. From here, let's move on to the bass. Okay, before I go any further, if you wanna learn more about music production, you can check out my free 45 minute masterclass where I break down my top 10 secrets to becoming a full-time music creator. You also get to see a behind the scenes look at my official Post Malone Wow remix I did for the NBA playoffs and how I used loops to create it. You can check that out at the link in the description. Let's jump back to it. Let's add another track, Software Instrument. Let's open our library. And let's go to synthesizer, bass, and we're gonna select an 808 bass. Let's hide our library and right click, create another MIDI region. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the bass and drums, they are homies, they're best friends. Let's extend this out. So what I like to do is hit the bass notes on the kick drum notes. That way they play together and they sound good together. Remember, you can also change this up, add some with it, add some without it, totally up to you. It's all your decisions here. Now, you're probably wondering, what notes do I play at this point? And what I want you to do is focus on only playing the white keys here. Don't worry about any of these black flats or sharps. All we wanna do is focus on the white keys. And if you do that, you're gonna be in one of two scales, either C major, and that's if you start on C, which is this note right here. So this would be C major. Or what I'm gonna do is actually play A minor, which is a relative scale of C major. Again, don't worry about the technical terms here. All you need to know is that you can start on the A note and play all of the white notes. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and back to A. So we're gonna stay within this range from A to A. So from this note here to this note here. And again, only the white keys. And by doing that, we'll be in one scale and it's a minor scale. It's gonna sound a little bit darker, not as cheerful or happy compared to a major scale. Now what we wanna do here is look for these kick drums. It's gonna be the lower notes here. Kick here, here's a kick, here's a kick, and then remember we moved this one over a little bit. So we wanna to try to land on those, and again, we can add some with or without it. I'm gonna open up my pencil tool, and I'm gonna draw an A note here, just like that. This allows you to stretch it out or make it smaller by clicking the end. And that way we can make the note longer or shorter. So it's just like me holding a note compared to just hitting it once. This is how it sounds if I hit it compared to if I hold it, you can see it's a lot different. It actually extends the note out. So let's do an A here, do another one here, see what that sounds like. So now we have a decision to make. Where do we want the next one to hit? Sometimes it's good to let things breathe a little bit. So maybe we have it hit on this other note down here towards the end. And to do that, I'll hold Option, draw it in and why don't we make this one shorter and also do another note here see what that sounds like notice I'm playing a G note which is a white key one whole step below the A that's cool now we got a little groove little melody let's duplicate this I'm gonna hold option and drag it over and on this ending one here, I'm gonna change these notes just to give it a little variation, make it a little different. But again, we're gonna stay on the white keys. So I'm just gonna drag this up to C. And then let's drag this one down to B. See what that sounds like. And that's it, our bass and kicks are working well together. Now let's move on to the melody. Let's add another track, Software Instrument, and we're gonna open up our library. Now this is totally up to you. You can use strings, you can use a piano, you can use a synthesizer, a lead, any sound that you want that's gonna be played on the higher end of the keyboard. Personally, I'm gonna go with a, let's go with a synthesizer and 
plucked. Now we can scroll through some of these and see what they sound like. Again, we're going to draw it in, or you can play it on your keyboard, on your computer's keyboard. Let's close this so we don't have to see it. Let's draw in some notes. Remember, our bass was right around here, from C2 to C3. So we're going to be higher than that. Let's go up to C4. And these are just different octaves. It's the same exact notes, but a higher octave. So you notice if I hit C here, and I go down here and hit C, they sound the same. Tonally, they're the same note, but one's higher and one's lower. We're going to zoom in a little here. I'm going to change this to a quarter note division, and let's draw on a melody. Let's see what that sounds like. Again, only the white keys. That's really cool, so let's go ahead and duplicate that in this last note. Let's drag it up, see what that sounds like. Perfect. So let's duplicate that. And now we have a melody in here. Now there's a couple things you can do to make this a little bit more creative. One thing is by adding effects. And for this melody, we're going to add a delay effect. And that's going to make it sound a little bit more full and like more things are happening without you having to play more complex melodies. So let's go to our audio effects. And here you can see all these different effects. We'll go to delay, echo, and hit stereo. Here's our delay. Let's solo this. What this does is it allows you to hear just that sound without hearing the bass or the drums. You're soloing the instrument. Sometimes there might be a headphone icon. That's another option for solo. You hear the delay, it's doing multiple versions of the note. Let's turn it off. Now the only way for you to understand these types of effects is to just get in here, twist parameters, turn knobs, and see how it affects the sound. Let's change this to 16th notes, so it's going to do a faster delay. There's also a color. Let's, let's go negative, make it dark. Now let's turn off our metronome and hear the whole thing. Another thing you might want to do here is play with the volume. Adjust the volume of certain tracks and see which sounds better higher, which sounds better lower. Again, it's all up to you. It's completely your decision. So I might turn this down a little. Let's turn the bass down a little. And that sounds really great. You're probably wondering what happens next. We have this four bar loop, but how do I turn this into a full song? And what I would do in this situation is copy all of this, duplicate it, and then I would start subtracting elements. So I would start taking things out to make things breathe and leave room for a vocalist or a rapper to get on top of here and do their thing or for you to play additional melodies on top. But for instance, I might go into the drums and remove these hi-hats from this section. I like to call this the backwards approach or subtractive arrangement. Let's see what that sounds like. You can also go in here with the voice plucks and take all of them and maybe lower them. So let's drag those down to a lower A. So now we have this lower voicing and then you can bring the hi-hats back in, start to build it up and then in the next section, change things up even more. And that's how to start making hip hop music. If you wanna see how I can take this eight bar loop and turn it into a full song, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on arranging. If you have any questions, again, let me know in the comments. Hit me with a like or a sub for the algorithm and stay tuned for more content coming out soon. We out.